Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ari Birshad and you are watching Food Tech Simplified where we make videos, lectures and tutorials for the students of food science and technology. So if you want to level up your profile and simplify studies then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon as well so that you don't miss the new videos when they come out. Today we are going to talk about science communication. Is it an emerging uh, domain? Is it an emerging career option? Can you be a science communicator? But first of all, let's build a case. Food industry is quite huge and in any country, whether it is a developed nation or a developing nation, in any country, food sector is one of the huge sector and it makes sense as well. Why? Because everyone relies on food. They have to consume food, three meals a day, two meals a day and uh, that food is essential. It's an essential commodity and that's why the industry is so huge. And there are different types of jobs and different types of roles. Uh, available in the food industry. You could be someone who is looking after a specific equipment, who is operating an equipment. Uh, you could be someone who is developing a new product. You could be someone who is developing a new process entirely. You could be someone who is looking after the safety of a specific food product. Or you could also be looking after quality of a food product. And these are some basic or general roles and they are definitely hundred different types of roles that I may not be aware of and definitely you should not trust someone who is wearing a yellow hoodie and talking on YouTube. However, if you want to know more about the different types of roles of a food science or technology uh, professional, I would link a video down in the description. You can check that out for yourself. So apart from that, if I had to remake that video, I would definitely add one more career option or, and this career option is not very obvious. This is kind of obscure. This is not directly visible. This is hidden. And that role is science communicator. Science communication is a domain in itself. And this is not a very obvious domain. This is sometimes hiding in plain sight. Okay. So what, what does science communication mean? First of all, let's talk about science communication. So as the name suggests, it means communicating science. See, the role of science, one of the objective or agenda of science community is to create public awareness. If you are if, for example, if you are watching this video and you don't belong to the food science or technology domain and you are just watching this video uh, just for just because of curiosity. So being a science graduate, if I am communicating science to you, then that is science communication, basically. And uh, one of the objective of science is to communicate science. They want to inform, they want to educate and they want to kind of raise awareness about the science because there are many researchers, many scientists all across the globe who are doing some important researches, who are probably developing new processes, developing new products. And probably uh, it could be possible that someone has found a specific component from sugarcane that can be utilized in our foods. Or this, this is just an example. So how do you communicate that with the general public who is not aware of the jargon used in the food industry? Who doesn't know phytochemicals? Who doesn't know aflatoxins? Because general public do not know these keywords, these technical jargon. And that's where the science communicators come in. They basically simplify the language, the jargon, and they, in, uh, and they inform the public. They educate the public and they raise awareness. For example, let's say uh, someone did a research on high pressure processing, okay, HPP. This is a novel technique in food industry. And there are a lot of jargons uh, in, the, in the research and they are talking about, we have to raise the pressure up to 20, 100 or 2000 Pascal or something like that. And the general public may not be aware that why are we applying pressure and all that stuff. But let's say if I come in and I simplify that message, and communicate that with the general public, then I am a science communicator. And essentially, uh, what I'm doing, I'm, what I'm trying to do on this channel, what I'm trying to do with Food Tech Simplified is science communication. Now you may be thinking that what are the job roles available and where do we apply for a job specifically if I want to be a science communicator? Now to be a science communicator, there are very limited jobs and these jobs are hiding in plain sight as I mentioned earlier in this video. But what I expect to see, because this is not very prominent right now, but what I expect to see in the future is that there are going to be many startups, many brands, and like I'm talking about food specifically. So someone start, let's say someone started a brand around protein bar. Okay, any brand right now understands or should understand that people like you and me 
are not necessarily reading a newspaper. I mean, obviously, there could be many people who are reading a newspaper. But the young audience, I'm talking about 18 to 24 uh, spectrum, they are not necessarily reading a newspaper or reading a magazine or reading a research paper. And they are more active on social media. Okay, uh, People like you and me are spending time on Instagram. We are probably spending two hours, three hours on Instagram, uh, two or three hours on YouTube, maybe some time on LinkedIn. You should actually spend more time on LinkedIn. Uh, maybe spending some time on Facebook and so on. Did I miss an app? The recent brands, the startups know that people like you and me are spending our time on social media and the brands realize the importance of communicating their brand value. They're building a brand basically involves uh, making a lot of content and creating awareness. See, uh, I'm talking a little bit about social media right now because now this is a, a very huge component of science communication. I mean, earlier, if you wanted to be a science communicator and still you can write blogs, uh, you could be someone who is writing review articles and still a lot of science communicators uh, write review articles and blogs and all that stuff. But the new hybrid of science communicators like me, uh, they wouldn't, you wouldn't see myself writing a review paper most of the time. I mean, I would like to create a video because that has more engaging power. You are more likely to watch a video as compared to read a blog. And I'm not, and this is not a blanket statement. I mean, obviously there are going to be many exceptions, but I'm talking about the demographic of, is it a demographic or age? So the age spectrum of 18 to 24. And social media is a huge game because we are present on social media. We are active on social media. And whenever a brand uh, let's say a brand wants to sell you protein bars. So that brand right now, uh, what they are going to strategize, they are going to put up content on different platforms. They are going to put up content on uh, LinkedIn, on Instagram, YouTube and different social media platforms, maybe Facebook as well. And they are going to do inbound marketing. Okay, there is outbound marketing and there is inbound marketing. I don't want to get into this marketing stuff, but I'm, talk I'm just uh, touching this briefly right now. And inbound marketing means you are putting up content uh, and, and I'm very giving you a very general or simply very simple definition that inbound marketing means you put up content, you educate the audience and you build an audience. You start building an audience around your brand. And now when you sell them, for example, let's say you have amassed an audience of 10,000 followers on Instagram because of your educational content. You are talking about protein, you are talking about sugar. You're talking about how to read a label and all that stuff. And people are attracted to you because you are uh, genuinely adding value. You are informing them, okay? You are informing science, basically, on social media. So now you can sell them and it's much more easier to sell to an audience who is already, who is already paying attention to you, to your brand, basically. So that's the game. That's the kind of game we are living in. And a lot of people don't realize that right now. And I can see that because I'm very active on social media, especially on LinkedIn, Instagram, and I can see different brands who are trying to hire interns right now. They are hiring interns who are not only good at science, who are not only good at food science or food technology, but they also have working knowledge and operational knowledge of social media. They should know how to do Instagram, how to make content for LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. They should know how they should know how to make posts on Canva.com. They should know how to make posts on Photoshop. And the brands and startups are realizing this because people like you and me, if uh, we are the customers, then they have to be present on those social media platforms. And that's where you can come in. That's where people like you and me can come in. And they could hire us as an intern or as a professional who can write blogs for them or who can create social media posts because right now you're not just creating social media posts you have to apply your knowledge of food science or food technology so that's kind of a hybrid domain this is, science communication is kind of a hybrid domain especially right now and this is very exciting for me uh, because not only i can utilize if for example if i had to look for a job i would definitely try to go with science communication profile However, this is, the downside is this is not very prominent. You will not see FSI or FCI or a very big brand like Nestle or something releasing vacancies like here are 30 vacancies and you can apply for science communication. Now, th that's not how, it's, how it works. 
uh, this is this is something very obscure this is very hidden and uh, you have to be pretty active on linkedin recently i shared an internship position i think there are um, two interns were required i'm not sure about that i shared that on my linkedin page and i cannot share this information over here because then i would have to make a video then i would have to edit it it's a long process sharing a post from linkedin to linkedin is very easy and that's why i tell a lot of people to go on linkedin if you're not following the food tech simplified page please do follow that already okay so i share uh, sometimes i share internship positions sometimes i share positions that are required in the food industry for freshers or for experienced people and i think we have already crossed these 3000 followers over there okay apart from that the point is that internship that specific internship was from good food institute india okay and they required basically an intern and they didn't specifically mention that they require a science communicator but i can see that because i'm aware of science communication as a domain and see uh, the point is to be aware if you are not aware of the different types of job roles that are available in the food industry then you wouldn't be able to self assess yourself and then you wouldn't be able to look for them if you know about a specific career option then you can look for it obviously so what are the skills required for science communication the skills required for science communication are basically i would say that i would categorize them as three uh, skills the first is you have to be very strong in your science concepts if you are for example you are someone who is not from food science domain and you are looking to do a job somewhere else then whatever your domain is maybe it's horticulture maybe it's biochemistry so you have to be strong in that so that's the first the second is you should know social media you should know how to operate you should know how to post content you should have some operational capabilities on social media platforms the third is communication and i would say in the food community uh, communication i believe that communication is a very underrated skill in the food industry i would because students ask me that uh, sir what are the skills that we need to build as a food technologist and i answer them build your communication skill and they say apart from that sir i mean like communication is very important and you don't realize this someone who has 60% 50% and amazing communication skills that person could get hired when compared with a person who has probably 9 cgp or 90% but is very average or mediocre in communication skills okay so that's why and that's the third category communication skills and the communication here doesn't mean writing blogs or something or speaking verbally right like i am doing right now uh it could also mean communicating effectively on social media platforms because right now the youtube is like a social media platform and i am using my public speaking skills to communicate with you i'm not a very i'm not an expert in communication skills okay i'm not an expert in public speaking but i am but this is kind of my strength and that's what i am playing on okay so you have to play on your strength you maybe you are very good at writing blogs so do that do that specifically so these are the skills required and what are the different job roles okay so the different job roles could be uh, you could be writing a blog you could be a content writer you could be a social media coordinator for a brand a food brand basically uh, you could also be hired in a museum that's a very interesting position to be uh, in uh, you could also be working i mean i'm talking about the top most job for science communicator possible you could be working in uh, discovery you could be working in nargio you could be working in history tv because basically whatever discovery nargio history tv all these platforms are doing they are communicating science and they are making science very engaging for the general public i mean anyone could go on discovery and they will understand what they are saying so that is a prime example of science communication okay so discovery tv and nargio and all that stuff because basically you are a journalist if you study if you want to be a science communicator you are kind of a journalist but the journalism is in the domain of science you are talking about science okay so these are the job roles these are the possible job roles um apart from that i would definitely recommend to just google science communicator because this is kind of a hybrid domain okay also i would also like to take the name of uh, I, i'm not sure about the name i forgot the name the handle is food science babe available on instagram check that out for yourself because uh, whatever she is doing she is a chemical uh, chemical engineer and a food scientist and she is communicating science she is trying to burst myths 
around food science, around food industry, different food products, processed food, basically. So she is communicating science, whatever she is doing on her. And I definitely recommend you to check out her page. Whatever she is doing, that is science communication. Also check out the page of by Eddie Spicer. Uh, she is a science communicator based on based in Australia and she is also communicating science, specifically food science right now. And she is not uh, talking about it in the usual way, like food science babe is talking or I am talking right now. She is doing it in a very, very different way. She is illustrating science. So you could be very good at Photoshop skills. You could be very great at design skills. And you can combine those design skills with the science skills, with the food science or food technology skills. And you can collaborate them, you can merge them to make something new out of it. Because whatever I'm doing right now, I'm using my design skills, I'm using my public speaking skills, I'm using the video editing skills, video recording skills, and then I'm creating content to create awareness about food science and technology. Now the next obvious question that I'm going to get is, okay sir, tell me what is the course that I need to do to become a science communicator? Or what is the degree that is required to become a science communicator? So I would say, first of all, you don't necessarily need a degree or you don't necessarily need to do a course to become a science communicator. You can do that just by yourself. This is completely DIY thing. Uh, you could start an Instagram page or you could you could start posting content on LinkedIn as well. And these are free platforms. You could start making content. You could visit canva.com because that is a design website. And I think that, that is also very easy to operate. I'm, I'm using that as well. I'm revealing my secrets here. Okay. So you can use canva.com and you could create content for different social media platforms. And you could share that. You could start sharing that. That could be on food safety. That could be on labeling. Okay, that could be on awareness, building awareness. So you could start posting content and you could try this for yourself and see that where it leads. Okay, so I think this can be a great career option for those who like to educate, who want to be active on social media platforms and who also love their domain. I mean, for me, this is a kind of a perfect situation, kind of a perfect career option. To be a science communicator. I mean, obviously, uh, right now what I'm doing is science communication, but this can also be a great career option. Still, if you want to be a science communicator, you just want to do a degree, I would recommend to go with Imperial College London. Uh, that I think that has probably the best course for a science communicator. And there are many colleges available in USA as well. You can just Google science communication degree in USA and you will, guess, uh, you will get a list of different colleges that are providing that specific course. You can also go over on Coursera or edX and write science writing or science communication. You will definitely get some online courses as well. However, I think that you don't necessarily need them. But if you are looking forward to go into discovery or NARG or something like that, Probably that degree, like uh, like an MS degree, Master's of Science degree in Science Communication, Science Writing, uh, that could probably help if you definitely want to be working with Discovery or these big platforms or probably starting your own show in the future. I mean, that could definitely help. In the last two or three months, I saw three positions that didn't explicit, uh, explicitly say that we are releasing position on Science Communication. Probably the recruiters also don't realize that we are releasing the positions for science communication but whenever uh, a brand that is basically a food brand or it could be any brand based in science but i'm talking specifically about food brand or startup whenever they release a vacancy whether they are intern or a professional whenever they release a vacancy and they want them to write blogs to be a content writer or to make social media post, then basically what that position means is science communication. I mean, that that's what I see in that advertisement. All right, so this was it for today. Let me know down in the comments if you have any kind of doubts. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel to go grow. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm not sure why are you, why haven't you subscribed already? That's completely out of my mind. Subscribing to the channel is free. Subscribe right now and hit the bell icon because that's also free. This content is for free for now. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'll see you next time. Class. Dismissed.